Hey, this is Kip and welcome to part three of my on-air company guide. This video is all about using work orders and this actually only applies to using AI pilots. So if you're on the Thunder server or you have no interest in using AI pilots at all, you can go ahead and skip this video. In part two, we hired an AI employee named Jurgen and had him fly a single mission for us at the end of that video. Now, the problem with that is that once he lands, he's going to be sitting there idle at his destination. He would have completed that job and we would get the money for it, but then he's just sitting there doing nothing. So ideally, I will have him working for many hours a day, maximizing how much money he's earning for the company. The easiest way to handle AI pilots and have them chain together jobs is by using a feature called work orders. And what work orders let us do is pick a bunch of different jobs and basically assign all of those jobs to that pilot and have them fly the entire route from job to job to job to job. And then we end up with something like this in the notifications log, where you can see that over the course of several hours, about four hours in this case, between eight o'clock Zulu to 12 o'clock Zulu, he finished seven jobs. And this is because I set up a work order and he just went through and did all of these jobs sequentially from one to the next to the next. So what we're going to do is go set up a new work order for Jurgen. And I'm going to do that by going to the top here and clicking on the middle button. This is the live operations map. And this just gives us a good overview of where our planes and our employees are. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that Jurgen is up here towards the north and it says that he's idling. His home airport is down here where we are at X-Ray 06, but he's up here because that's where he last finished a job. Since the last video, I did have Jurgen pick up that PA-44 that I rented that was being ferried to our home base, and I had him fly a bunch of jobs with it already. So Jurgen and the PA-44 are currently located at this airport right here, Foxtrot Delta 33, and they're waiting for their next orders. From this map, I can see all of my planes listed on the left. So here's our PA-44 that Jurgen is near. So all I have to do is click this little familiar target icon that says find jobs at the current airport. And not only is it going to find jobs at the airport where this plane is, but it's also going to automatically apply a filter that will give us jobs that are realistic for this plane based on its passengers and its payload limitations. So here are the list of jobs recommended for the PA-44. First, I'm going to adjust the range filter up here. I don't really want to do a thousand nautical mile legs, so I'm going to change this to 50 to 150 nautical miles and then press enter to redo the search. And also make sure you have this exclude human only jobs filter checked as well, because we're looking for jobs that the AI can take. If I uncheck that and search again, in this column right here, there will be a little like human silhouette icon. And those jobs are ones that can only be taken for a human pilot to fly. So in our case, I'm checking this again to make sure we exclude those. So every job here can be taken by our AI pilot. Because I'm not flying these jobs myself, I don't really care what direction he goes in. I kind of want to keep him in Florida so he doesn't get too far away from the home base just yet. So I'm just going to sort by pay and grab a job that looks good here. Something I ran into in part two was carrying too much of a payload. So up here where it says total weight, I'm actually going to knock this down a couple hundred pounds on the maximum. So instead of 1200 pounds, I'm going to bring it down to a straight 1000. So all I have to do is just start picking jobs. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pick this one right here. It's the highest paying job. It's going to this airport in the bottom right called Foxtrot Delta 70 or River Acres. I'm just going to hit the take button here to take this job and it's going to stay on the map here. So now I've accepted that job and it's pending, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to get more and more jobs and string them together. Now, when I click that airport, you can see at the top that it says FD 70 River Acres, the altitude, the size of the airport. And then over here, there's another find jobs button. So all I'm going to do is click on this and it's going to find jobs that are going from that airport. So because Jurgen is going to end up there after his first job, I'm now going to find another job that goes from that new airport to another one. So this is how we begin kind of a chain of jobs to link them all up. So he goes from point A to B to C to D. So I'm going to go ahead again and pick another, just a one leg job. This job is for 2,600 credits and it's going to the south end of Florida here at Homestead. So I'm going to go ahead and now take that job. 
since he's going to fly from FD70 down to Homestead. Once again, I'm going to click Homestead. Now I want to find a job from Homestead. So I'm just going to repeat this again with a little find job button here at the top. It's loading all the jobs that are departing from Homestead. So now I'm going to pick another job. And what I'm doing while I do this is I'm keeping an eye out to see if I see our home base at Arcadia revealed here. So here's Arcadia and I don't see a black circle that says X-Ray 06. So none of these jobs are going to our home base where I want to ultimately bring Jurgen. So we're picking another job here. This one's for 2,500 credits and I'll take that. And that one went up to 09 Fox Alpha. So I'll click on 09 Fox Alpha. Now, if you're doing this process and you forget where you last had the pilot going, all you have to do is go up here to the pending jobs list and we'll just follow this chain of jobs. I'm gonna ignore the mission at the top. Remember, we're just picking up these cargo jobs and I'm gonna start with where Jurgen is. He's at FD33. So this is the first job in the chain. So here I can just look and say, okay, FD33 to FD70. And then the one above that is from FD70 to Homestead. And then from Homestead to 09 Fox Alpha. So now I know that this plan of this chain of jobs, so far he's ending up at 09 Fox Alpha, assuming that he does all of these jobs successfully. So now I can just go back to 09 Fox Alpha. I'm actually gonna click on 09 Fox Alpha. And this brings me to an airport information page. But once again, if we look for this little target icon, it'll let us find jobs from this airport. So I'll just click on that as a quick way to get back to the job search filtered for this airport. All right, so now we're looking at a list of all of the jobs that leave 09 Fox Alpha. So we continue picking jobs to keep this chain of jobs going. Jurgen can actually work for up to 14 hours before he needs a mandatory eight hour rest period. So you can actually chain a lot of jobs together at once for a pilot. All right, so this is enough. I'm gonna let him finish at 3-2 Fox Alpha for this set of jobs. So all we have to do now is go up to my company in the top left, and then we're gonna go to work orders. And this is where we're gonna create the work order. You can see that we have no pending or active work orders right now. So I'm just gonna click the create a work order button. Now at the top of this screen, we need to first choose an aircraft that's gonna be used to fly all of the jobs in this work order. And for us, it's the PA-44. So I'm gonna select that from the list here in the top left. Now that we've chosen it, you can see that it adds our first leg on the left column here. This is from Foxtrot Delta 33. So this is the airport where the plane is located. And remember, Jurgen is also at that airport. So I'm gonna first name this. I'm just gonna change the title. It, it does auto-generate a name like work order and then a letter. But if you wanna name it, you can go ahead and do it. I'm just gonna write Jurgen. And right now when I'm recording this video, it happens to be Wednesday afternoon. So I'm gonna type in Wednesday afternoon jobs, just so I know when it's done that you know, I'm just familiar with the name of this work order. Now the activation date is set at the current time that you created the work order. So if we activate this, then Jurgen will start this job and string of jobs immediately. If you wanna schedule it for the future, you can do that by choosing another date and time to start it. And up here, it's automatically put in the departure airport, which is the first departure airport, the one where the plane is located. Now here in the middle, we can choose our crew. Because all we need is a pilot for this one, all I have to do is select Jurgen, and he's at that airport right now. Now this top section is all set up. We've chosen the plane, when to fly, from where, and which pilot's gonna be flying it. If you have a larger plane, you may need to select a co-pilot and or flight attendants up here. Now, something that could be confusing is right here on the right, there's also a list of your employees. But this section is only if you wanna take the employees as a passenger, not that you want them actually flying that flight for you. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is type in the destination up here. We have to do this manually for the first leg in the work order. After this, it'll be really easy to add other legs. But for the first one, we have to manually type in the destination that the cargo is going to on the first leg. So that's just right here. It's the destination of this cargo, FD70. So I'm gonna type FD70 up here. 
Now, once I type that, we can see how much fuel is needed for this leg going from FT33 to FT70. It says we need 22.8 gallons. And then here to the right of it, it says load fuel up to, and it defaults to maximum, but we don't need this much fuel. As soon as I check to load the cargo down here, you'll see that we're overweight because of that. So I just wanna take the minimum amount of fuel we need so we're as light as possible and we have as much room for cargo as we can have. So I'm just gonna use this slider and drag it down until this number turns red. So there it's red, which means we don't have the fuel that's required. And I'm just gonna tick it up with this little arrow key so it turns white again. So now that's enough fuel. We have more than 22.8 gallons for this leg. And that is going to include reserve fuel. Now that we set the fuel, we're gonna tell them to load the cargo. So down here, it shows the cargo that's going to this destination. So I'm just gonna check this box that says load. And as soon as we do that, we can see that it's added to our payload over here. We can see our total weight, 1,200 out of 1,500 pounds. So we have a little extra weight available for either more cargo or more fuel, but we don't need to do that. There's no reason to take more fuel than we need. So that's good. Now that this is done, if we look on the left side, it now shows that our first leg is going from FD33 to FD70. This third airport is the alternate airport. So if there's an emergency or something like that, he will divert to this airport and then stop. And then under that, it shows that we have planned one cargo and no passengers. So this is confirming that he is picking up cargo. If you see a zero there, then that means you haven't checked the box over here to load any cargo. So make sure that he is taking cargo on this leg. Now that this is done, I'm gonna show you the trick to adding more legs really easily. You could go over here and click add a leg and then find the cargo and type in the destination manually. But the easiest way to add the next leg is just by clicking this box right here that says show all cargo. And when we do that, it'll reveal all of the cargo we have available for all of our missions. Now, conveniently, you'll notice this one row has a little button here that says add leg. And if you look at the departure, it's the arrival of the first leg. So when he does this first leg, he's gonna end up at FD70. And then you'll see that add a leg right here. This is for cargo leaving FD70. So this is how we easily chain these jobs together. So all I have to do is click on this add leg button. When I do that, you can see it does a bunch of things automatically for us. It's added a new leg here on the left. It's automatically put in the destination and chosen the cargo. So it's picked this cargo that's going to Homestead and put Homestead at the top, and it also loaded the cargo. So this is already set up for us. We can see that the only thing that needs our attention is the fuel. It's showing this fuel number in red because it's requiring 27.7 gallons for this leg. So all I have to do is tick up the fuel here so it's white, and now we're good. So now leg two is already done. So I'm just gonna repeat this process over and over again. We just click show all cargo, find the add leg button and click it. This next leg is going to 09 Fox Alpha. And once again, it's put in the destination. It's automatically checked that cargo to load it. And all we have to do is make sure that the fuel is enough. So we're gonna fill up to satisfy this 28.2 gallons. And that's it, that's leg three. And I just keep doing it. Show all cargo, add leg, and the fuel is good. It says one cargo, so that's good there. Show all cargo, add a leg. If there's red here, so I need to fix this. I'll just hit up a few times. Now we have enough fuel. And once again, show all cargo, add leg. Fuel is white, so we're good. Show all cargo, add a leg. Fuel is good. Show all cargo. Another one, add a leg. Fuel is red, add a couple pounds of fuel or a couple gallons of fuel here. Once again, show all cargo. And there's another one ending at FA84 and add a leg, add the fuel, show all cargo. And so now you can see there are no more add leg buttons because there is no cargo going from this final airport to another destination. So these are all nine of the legs and jobs that we had picked from the logistics center. So now if I look on the left here, we can see all of the legs that are planned. He's starting at FD33, and I like to scan this to make sure that he's taking cargo or passengers on every leg. Otherwise, we may have made a mistake. So all the way down, we can see one cargo, one cargo, one cargo, all the way down the list. 
and the very last leg, he is ending up at 3, 2, Foxtrot Alpha. Anytime you click one of these legs on the left, it'll change the center section for the settings for that leg. So I'm going to select the final leg. And on this final leg, when he's done, I'm going to tick this box right here that says Force Crew to Rest at Arrival. So as soon as Jurgen makes his way to this final airport at Sunset Strip Air Park, he's going to rest once he gets there. And he's going to rest for eight hours. It's a mandatory resting period for the pilots. Up here in the top left, this text shows an overall ETA, how long it's going to take him to fly. And it says the estimate is 9.7 hours for him to do all of these jobs. You can have him fly for up to 14 hours without a penalty. I try to keep it around 10 or 12 hours at a maximum. Now, if you look up here and you see that it says only like three or four hours and you want to be more efficient and have him fly more jobs, instead of activating the work order, you could just save it and then come back to it and edit it and add more legs. But because I have him working for almost 10 hours, that's more than enough for this work order. So I'm just going to go ahead and click activate right here. Now it's taking us back to the work order page and here we have his work order and it already says in progress. That's because he's already there idling where the plane is and he's ready to start these flights. So right here it shows kind of this little plan or breadcrumb of all the airports he's going to end up going to. And then at the very end of this chain, it shows a little moon with little Z's above it. So that represents him resting at the end. So this gives us a quick overview of where he's flying and then that he's going to rest when he's finished. Now it says that this is in progress already. So we can go up here to our live operations map. And if we scroll down, we can see that this plane, oh, it was just in apron mode, but now it's ready to go. So there was a little orange icon indicating apron work. So it was being loaded with cargo, but now it's ready. And there is a little bit of a delay sometimes when you're waiting for him to start it. But if you keep your eye on this or check in, he will actually start it. Don't worry if he doesn't start it right away. Sometimes it takes a few minutes. So if I mouse over the plane, you can see it says it's on ground, moving, in operation for a departure taxi. So he's going to go ahead and fly the first leg in this work order. He's going to go ahead and fly all the way down here to Foxtrot Delta 70. And once he gets there, because we've chained all of these jobs together, he's going to bounce from one airport to the next, to the next, to the next. He will automatically land, unload the cargo, pick up the new cargo in a turnaround, and then fly to the next airport. He's going to do that for the next 10 hours. Now, there is a chance that during one of these flights, there's like an in-flight emergency where he has to divert to an alternate airport. And in that case, he'll land at the alternate airport and just be waiting there because there's no cargo to pick up at that alternate. When Jurgen finishes this 10 hours of work and he lands at that final destination airport, he's going to rest. Something we could do is go and grab a bunch of jobs starting from that last airport and then go and create another work order. So he will land and he will sleep. And then once he's done sleeping, if we have another work order that's activated from that last airport, he'll, after he's done sleeping, is just wake up and start that next work order automatically. All right, so I hope you can see how useful work orders are. If you happen to be on the Stratus or Cumulus servers, you can set up these work orders and really maximize the amount of money that your AI pilots are earning for you while you're doing flights yourself. In the next video, part four, we're going to take on this level two mission. This is called Local Jobs, and it's our first multi-leg mission. So we actually have to take cargo from point A to B and then from point B to C before we can complete this mission. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part four.